Welcome back to Never Shut Up. It's your boy Marcel Swatty about to talk about Tua. And let me try this. Drums. Tagabaloa. Tagabaloa. Hello. Uh. <laughs> All right. He and Missy consider retirement. Sound like I'm concussed the way I'm saying that last name. All right. We know who Tua is, man. He had two concussions last year, maybe three. Um, and now he's talking about it. And he said he thought about walking away from the game after that Christmas Day concussion that ended his season. He said, quote, yeah, I think I considered it. Is he still concussed? I think I considered it. I love you thinking about consider. Yep. You know, for a time, having sat down with my family, having sat down with my wife, she ain't part of your family. Let me stop. And having those kind of conversations to us said, really, it'll be hard for me to walk away from this game with how old I am with my son. Oh, all right. I see where you're going. Always dreamed of growing, playing as long as I could to where my son knew exactly what he was watching his dad do. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's my health. It's my body. I feel like this is what's best for me and my family. I love the game of football. If I didn't, I would have quit a long time ago. All right, Tua. Woo! Not the strongest of motivations to continue to play the game of football. Um, and I'll tell you why. Look, many of men have played the game of football, and it wasn't for the, the conscious thought of their kids knowing what they were doing. But that can motivate you, right? That obviously would have been a motivating factor for me if MJ was alive and conscious of it. But my daughter was. And I never continued to play longer so she can be conscious of how good her daddy was. Let me tell you why. Because that can't be in priority to all the work and rigors that you're going to deal with that that person is not going to be there. Here's an example. Right? This is one example why you got to sooner or later just leave the nest. You know, you got to let your kids make their own decisions. Because when it comes decision time, that decision that you're trying to make for them, they have to live through it. So you can be the person to say, you're going to this school because I went to this school, damn it. And that's not what the kid wants. But the kid is going to honor you and is going to do it for you. But then the kid has to do it and go to class every day in the winter, in the cold times, in the hot times, in the bad times, do all that work, and they're doing it in honor of you. I've always disputed that. I've always questioned, like, uh, how far are you really going to go doing it for somebody else? It has to really start selfishly with you. Now, we know what selfish and selfless have in common self. So Tua said first it was about his son and it was about his family, but then he brought it back. It's about Tua. Now we know Tua's a beast. We know Tua's a worker and I'm glad he got his flowers last year, even though we kept throwing flower petal after petal and just saying, damn, we got to stop throwing them because he kept missing action. But for a guy who was kind of in question of how good he could translate his skills, I think he answered most, if not all those questions last year, even in that spot duty. Tua wants it himself. Tua went out there and started challenging himself to figure out ways to get this situation handled. And this is going to be interesting. He's been doing jujitsu, right? To learn how to fall, basically. Ah, he's training himself how to fall. And this is something I've always talked to fans about. Because I got into a couple accidents before and I was able to manipulate, maneuver in the air because I had learned how to fall. Now I didn't take jujitsu. I just played enough football and was conscious enough like, yo, there are different ways to land on this ground. There are alternatives to just taking all the hell every single play, right? So Tua's now learned that. And supposedly he said all off season, he's been thrown up in the, in the air, landing on the ground, contorted all these different ways to learn how to fall, to stop that simple fall, right? You see a little kid fall. A little kid always falls like the same way, like neck, loose, just limber, and fall that way. Tua is now working on that fall. Ha! Ah, is that going to translate to when the game comes? I hope so, because I want Tua to keep balling, and I don't want Tua to be interrupted from his balling just because of concussions. But... He did ask himself, 
about retiring. And the old saying is, once you think about retiring, you are retiring. I don't know, but let's say this. What if Tua gets rocked? Not even knocked out. There's a difference, right? Get your bell rung. Like, oh my God. Is Tua gonna be incentivized to tell anybody? Two, is Tua gonna wanna actually do what's necessary to recover from that, or is he gonna play it off? Raising my hand, coach, I'm playing it off, <laughs> right? I am not gonna let y'all in down my third or fourth concussion. So now two is in that position. So when something else happens to him, he's not gonna get the proper medical attention, probably. Then, are you gonna now take it from there to should you retire? Is the sun gonna stop you from that thought process from actually retiring? Your family? I know you make a grip playing football and you make two grips when you play quarterback in the NFL. But at the same time, what's going to stop Tua from playing? A concussion where he's forced to stop playing, medically not approved, or is Tua finally going to have to say if he gets another concussion, enough is enough. These are all the things he's thinking about before he says, Blue 98, 98. Y'all get it now? Man, football is so much more than those muscles and those pads we see on the outside. It's all these things going on in the mentals as well. And the organization is sitting there. Let's watch this draft. Let's see how they play it off in terms of having their backup situation in terms of not just on the roster currently, but growth, blossoming, late bloomer. We'll see what falls to them. So Tua has a lot on his head. Pun intended. Uh, a lot on his plate, man, to just think about. And then you still got to play like you never thought about a concussion because you got to get mindless out there. If you don't get mindless out there, dog, you're just playing handicapped. You're just playing out there with a crutch. You got to ball till you fall. You can't ball till you crawl and then fall. You can't stall the ball when you fall. <laughs> you get it? And that's the toughest part about sports. That's why you got to salute the greats because somehow, some way, they kept getting knocked down, but they didn't hit their head, stay down, and they found a way to get up.